Welcome back. NASA has been very busy lately dealing with perseverance and ingenuity up on Mars, but there's another mission that is just as exciting or more exciting, depend on, depending on who you ask. OSIRIS-REx has been collecting samples on the asteroid Bennu and will begin its trek back home today. And joining us this morning is Chief Scientist Jim Garvin to talk about the mission and what it means to NASA and, well, the world. Good morning, Jim. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Mike. First of all, how exciting this is. Uh, it, it almost seems like this trip has taken so long, but I guess uh, steady is safe when it comes to doing what you've done here with Osias Rex. Absolutely. And these all robotic missions with their autonomy and their intelligence really are amazing. They're the stuff of dreams that makes the Star Trek come alive. Let's go back to the beginning when OSIRIS-REx was launched, just getting to this asteroid, which is millions and millions of miles away. Just the, tech, the technology challenges just getting it there. What was that like? Oh, it was amazing. And our flight navigators, those women and men that get us to the right place to be there when the asteroid is there, to go into orbit, to rendezvous, to fly around this asteroid, to back in and sample, to back out and be ready to come home, this is the stuff of dreams. 20, 30 years ago, this would have been considered almost unimaginable. And now our team at, at Lockheed Martin and NASA and the University of Arizona are doing it. It's just amazing. That is incredible. We are looking at some of the animation right now uh, from OSIRIS-REx and getting, how do you land on a comet that far away? Well, you actually do, it's almost like landerless landing. Okay. You back in really close, you know, six to nine feet, and then you extend an arm with a vacuum device, collect the samples, inject energy and gases, grab the samples and back away. And we did that last October. And then we flew back over the site that we sampled to see what we had done to the asteroid. And now we're ready to pack it up and come home. And what are some of the things that you were able to extract from uh, the asteroid? Well, we mapped it exquisitely. I mean, literally, we have Google Asteroid now ready to go for Bennu. But we learned about the what it's made of, the building blocks of its chemistry, and what we think it can tell us from the samples. And when those samples come back, they're kind of like artifacts from a lost time, a fossil record of our solar system. When we bring them back to Earth Labs for the women and men, the girls and boys will be scientists of tomorrow. The bonanza of what we learned is almost undescribable because we don't know. And the tools we have will uncover mysteries that could explain origins of oceans, building blocks of life. These are the big questions that we can't study with what we have on Earth. So we have to go there. So did I read this correctly as well? You're hoping possibly to learn more about the origin of life, not only on Earth, but that it may have originated life somewhere else in the universe? Well, what we hope to do is look at those building blocks, the chemical stuff that gets together to form what could become life. And these primitive asteroids, like Bennu, are the best place to look in the solar system for that, from that early time, before all the planets were doing their thing like they do now, like Mars and Earth and Venus. So this is the right place to go. We've gotten there. We're now coming home. This is going to be incredible. I Literally, we can't imagine how great it will be when we have these samples back in two years. Now, this is not the first time that a probe has been able to go and collect samples from, a, from an asteroid, correct? Was it 2014? Am I in the right ballpark there? Well, our colleagues in Japan have brought back you know, small, small, tiny amounts of dust from okay. um, asteroids. And they have another mission coming back now, Hayabusa 2, which will bring back more samples. But this is a different kind of sampling that we did with, with the asteroid Bennu with OSIRIS-REx. So we'll have more stuff, more well described by the measurements we made before we sampled. And so we're trying to take it to the next step with partners actually from Canada and Japan mm -hmm. and around the world. So we can learn about these small bodies that interact with Earth. And so we need to get to know them because they're part of our destiny. And what kind of, I, mean, I don't want to get ahead of myself because it still has a long way to go before it returns to Earth, but what does this type of of mission and hopefully being completing it successfully, what does that mean for where we go from here? Well, this kind of mission shows us what we can do with all robotic techniques. And as we send the women back to the moon and eventually to places like Mars with ourselves going, the robotic forerunners, these predecessors, these precursors, 
open our door, our eyes to places that in some cases we don't want to go. This asteroid, if you went there, you'd have to tether yourself to it just to stay on it because it's so small. Some asteroids are literally clumps of bound boulders just stuck together. Mm -hmm. And so some of these kind of places we can't go to. And yet to explore our universe, we need to see these places. So we send our robotic emissaries to go and figure them out, to open those frontiers, like we're doing on Mars with Perseverance and Curiosity, like we've done on the moon. This is our opening the doors to small bodies like asteroids. Jim Garvin with NASA, we appreciate your time this morning. And please visit us again once, once we get closer or once this mission comes to its conclusion. Absolutely. Can't wait. Two years from now, be ready. The we stuff will. is coming home. Very good. Thank you, Jim.